What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are having a great day today. Today's video is gonna be on the junkyard motor that I have recently purchased. And what I'm gonna do today is get the thing ready and get it ready to be put in and I'll probably put the engine in tomorrow. Today's Saturday. I have the engine tore down as far as the oil pan. Everything's off of it. Cause I am gonna put my good, uh, the trick flow heads I got on it and my E303 cam. The reason why I'm going back with the E303 cam is because it's a lot better as far as it being uh, streetable and drivable. And plus, this is a junkyard engine and it has 160,000 miles. And I do not want to take a chance at blowing this one up, you know, while I'm just having it, you know, while I'm saving my money up for the 347 stroker that I want to build. So the reason I put that cam in there is because it doesn't work off the same RPM uh, range. This, this cam's I think is 2,200 to 6,000. My other cam was 2,400 to 6,800, I think. I'm pretty sure what happened to the other engine was the RPM itself and not the actual horsepower. But with this setup, it should still make about 370-ish, 350-ish horsepower at the crank, maybe about 300 at the wheels. And you know, that'll be plenty to drive around, be streetable, it'll be really good under daily driving conditions for the build that I'm gonna try to do just for this junkyard motor. And it should make me pretty happy. I was gonna just leave it bone stock and just drop it in, but just me being me, I had the stuff there. You know, I might as well reseal the engine, put new gaskets on it, and just go from there. But anyways, guys, we'll pick the video up once we get to the shop. All right, guys, we're finally up at the shop. Oh, speaking of race car, if you hadn't seen my last video, guys, be sure to take and uh, go back and watch it. We actually took old Interstate to the uh, Anderson Motor Speedway and went and practiced it car was really good really happy with it and it was doing great so it should be good for the race coming up this coming weekend they actually canceled the april 20th race because of rain which sucked but you know can't well i mean you can't really do nothing when it's raining anyways on to the motor like i say this is a junkyard engine it has 160,000 miles i already took everything apart and it actually looks pretty good it's not too tarnished up it looks like they changed the oil like they were supposed to in it and took decent care of it i checked the rod rod bearings and made sure everything still looked pretty good and it does so what i'm gonna do is get this thing cleaned up and painted i already got it taped off i, I actually got it kind of scuffed down and sanded i just gotta spray it with some paint and take and put the oil pan on it and the timing cover and stuff and uh paint it and make it look pretty good and i'll probably just do a little time lapse on that or something what i'll probably do is just take and pick the video up once i get everything put on it and painted kind of tell you guys a little tips and tricks of you know what i do when i put an engine together sort of put an engine together <laughs> mildly but anyways guys what i usually do as far as putting a camshaft in i take it like a long bolt this is a uh, 3 8 bolt right here and what i do is i take and i just I put that bolt in there to help have leverage to where i can slide it through the cam bearings without tearing the cam bearings up and especially once you get to right you know get real close to the engine it's really hard to hold that cam especially with all the assembly lube and stuff on it so I like to put that bolt in there and, you know, get a decently long bolt, three or four inches long. That's what she said. <laughs> and just uh, that way it helps you have leverage and you can slide it all the way back with no issues. Anyways, guys, I'm going to take and get this thing cleaned up some more and try to get it put back together. All right, guys, I had to get my toolbox cleaned off a little bit to where I could actually work on it. But what I was going to kind of give you a little tech tip, like what I like to do as far as putting gaskets and stuff on. And this works for pretty much any any gasket, like time and cover, water pump, pretty much anything. Um, what I like to do is I like to take this 3M yellow glue right here and help hold the gasket into place. I know it has dial pins and stuff on these, but I like gluing it to the time and cover first. Personally, what I do is I just take and put a little yellow glue around the water ports and just little dabs here and there just to help hold the gasket into place and this glue is really strong and it holds really good and it dries pretty quick. But anyways guys, I really like this glue. It just helps me hold it into place and where it needs to be. All right, guys, I'm going to show you another little thing I like to do. I already got the timing cover on. Uh, whenever I put the oil pan gasket on, 
I like to put a little bit of silicone in these corners on the fronts and the backs here and here just a little just enough to help seal off those little corners and also on the timing cover right here I'll throw a little silicone right there on those edges everything's torqued down under underneath it and torqued down the timing cover so it should be good to go but let's get this oil fan on okay so we got the engine painted it looks pretty good like I say it's just a little quick spray job it's nothing that's gonna be great like I say my car is not a show car it's just a nice car daily driver it's pretty much all I've built it for but we got it painted up it looks pretty good so what we're gonna do now we're gonna let it tack up for a minute and then we're gonna uh, pull the tape off I gotta clean the heads up but it clean the heads up bolt them on and get the intake bolted on and i mean that's really about it guys and then it'll be ready to set in the hole get the headers on it uh the crankshaft fully mm, that's really about it guys and then it'll be ready to set in the car okay guys another little tip for you guys as far as the head gaskets go if you have a head gasket that doesn't say front like this one does always put the big holes to the back because if the big holes are at the front it's only going to circulate water through the front side of this engine and the back's gonna overheat. So always, always, if this gasket doesn't have a marking for front or back or say anything like that on it, always put these hole, the bigger holes to the back because it allows water to flow through, flow through the heads and everything like, like it's supposed to and circulate all the way through the block. Because if you don't, like I say, you're gonna end up running these back cylinders hot and melting something down, burning up a piston. And you definitely don't wanna do that. So just another little tip for you guys. Just figured I'd give you guys a little heads up on that. Well, everybody you wouldn't tell it was a junkyard motor by looking at it now, but the motor's looking pretty good. It's really clean, pretty happy with it. Like I say, still fingers crossed that it runs good, but I'm pretty certain it will. The place I ordered it from, they had a video of the car running and it seemed to run okay, so. I went ahead and paid for it. I went ahead and adjusted all the valves. Now all I really gotta do is get the uh, headers on it, the valve covers, and that's really about it for today. And other than that, once I get that done, I'll probably be done. Okay, so we're finally done. It's finally all back together, ready to go, ready to set inside the car. Man, that took forever. I was being really tedious though, making sure I had everything checked, double checked. I mean, just making sure everything's good to go. Like I said, double checked all the bottom end and stuff. Like I said, it should be fine. But the next thing to do is get this thing in the car and hopefully it runs good. Good. I'm pretty sure it will. I'm pretty confident with it. Hopefully it'll last. It needs to last me about a year to a year and a half, maybe at most, maybe a year and a half. So I can save up, get my money for the 347 stroker I want to build. This is just going to be a mild build just for, you know, just to get me by just something that has a little bit of power, not too much. I'm sure it's going to actually perform pretty well. I just don't want to put that other camshaft in it. Like I said, in the earlier part of this video, just because I don't want to be able to turn it that many RPMs and risk blowing this motor up that's the reason why i put the e303 cam in the e303 i know a lot of people give them a lot of crap but they perform well i really like them they've been around forever and they're a really great street cam just really good street performance cam especially for something that's going to be driven a lot and plus while i got the car running i'm going to take and do other little things to it as i go just you know some interior stuff try to get some coilovers for it that's going to do it for today's video guys if you did like the video be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you're new here and until next time guys we'll see you later